Hi and welcome to another episode of Rob's Triathlon Tips for Beginners. You may have heard some people use the term bonking and that's when someone seems to run out of energy in a race and they either stop completely or you'll see them walking during the run of part of a triathlon. And I've been lucky enough to, to not have that happen to me. I've planned my nutrition properly, I guess. and. And, uh, but I've always wondered, you know, what's going on that makes that happen sort of in a mathematical sense. So I've created a spreadsheet with some calculations based on some research that I've, I've done uh, to try and make sense of that and show you why you might bonk in a race. And I've jokingly called it the bonkulator. So hopefully you enjoy this video. Okay, so let's dive into my bonkulator spreadsheet. Uh, I've got some different sections uh, on the left. I've got a bunch of variables, variables that we can tinker with. And then I've got sections for swim, bike, and run, sort of analyzing calories. Um, so I'll explain each of these variables as we go. And my very high level understanding of <laughs> how energy works in the body. So basically your, your body can use carbs and fat for energy. And depending on your body and your habits, uh, it will use them in different percentages. Um, in terms of carbs, your body stores, it breaks down your food into sugar and then stores it in your liver and your muscles as something called glycogen. Um, and the average person has got about 2000 calories of glycogen in their bodies, apparently. And something like 1,600 calories of that is in your muscles and 400 or so in your liver. And your body will use what's in your muscles first and reserve what's in your liver to sustain like your brain and some other tissues in your body. So it's not like you've got 2,000 and you can use it for working out um, in, in most cases. But I've got here calories of glycogen on board at the start of the race as 2000 because as an athlete, you're probably going to do some carb loading before the race. And apparently you can get your glycogen up to maximum about 3000. So I put 2000 in here just for just out of interest for demonstration purposes, really. <laughs> uh -huh grams of carbs consumed per hour during the bike and the run. Uh, let's maybe knock that down to 60 to start here. Um, if you're somebody that struggles to get calories in without getting an upset stomach, uh, that may be a number that's been recommended to you is to start there and then train your body's ability to take on nutrition, uh, not just training the swim, bike and run, training nutrition. Um, calories per gram of carbs. This is a multiplier that I put in here, just looking at some labels of things like a, a gel that maybe is 30 grams of carbs in 100 calories. So that's where I got that number from. It's very scientific, obviously. <laughs> so that would work out to this person consuming 200 uh, calories of carbs in an hour, if that was accurate. Um, the amount of calories of fat you have on your body will change based on your body's composition. You may be super lean and have 25,000 or you may be a little bit overweight and have like 40,000 calories uh, on board. Um, calories per gram of fat, nine is a number that I've, I saw on a few different websites. So that's why, why I've got nine there. And fat oxidation rate is basically uh, how quickly you can burn fat based on your body's metabolism. So the higher the number, the better. And this seems to be the range um, that people can possibly have. Um, <laughs> The, so 0.24 is worst case scenario and I got that number from this chart here 
from a website called Endure IQ, um, which I believe Dr. Dan Plews uh, created. And you can get coaching and tips from him there. Um, he's like the top age group finisher in Kona uh, for an Ironman. So, and he's a low carb athlete. So <laughs> it works for some people, right? May not work for you. But basically, if you follow this chart, if you don't eat a low carb diet, you don't do fast and training, you follow the yellow line, and you're going to finish an Ironman in, say, 15 hours, and you're female, well, you, the worst case, you're going to have a fat oxidation rate of 0.24. Uh, so, kind of, that would work out to burning up 130 grams of or calories of fat in an hour based on that fat oxidation rate you working for 60 minutes and um, there being nine calories per gram of fat it's just a multiplication of this times nine times 60 uh, calories burnt per hour swimming biking and running will totally change from one individual to another from one website you look at to another. <laughs> These are just numbers in here for demonstration purposes. Uh, down at the bottom here I've got sometimes let's these are more for like a half Ironman distance. So let's say you finished the swim in 45 minutes, you did the bike in three and a half and you did the half Ironman or half marathon in two hours and 15 minutes. Uh, total active time six and a half hours plus you add some transition time in there that's roughly an average athlete maybe a little slower than an average athlete so how does that work out in terms of calories and whether someone will bonk or not you can see here uh, you would burn you know close to 400 calories in the swim maybe and with the, their fat oxidation rate really being really bad, you're only going to use about a quarter of the energy you're getting. It's going to be coming from fat, the rest from carbs. Um, I put here calories of carbs eaten during swim, zero, because you're not eating. <laughs> and you can see you've hardly put a dent in your fat reserves, and you've already taken a chunk out of... Um, the calories you have in glycogen so your body converts the glycogen to glucose in your bloodstream and then there's some process to convert the glucose to ATP I think it's called and then your muscles use that to do work uh, during the bike you might burn about just over 3,000 calories and you can see like it works out that you're going to burn even less fat during the bike and more carbs and that you may end up feeling sluggish and uh, potentially starting to drain some glycogen from your liver maybe or not even be able to finish the bike <laughs> i'm not sure exactly how accurate my spreadsheet is let's just say that but you can see from these simple calculations that you may run into trouble and then you will definitely be walking if not maybe even not finish the run if you're only getting in 60 grams of carbs an hour and your fat oxidation rate is really bad basically um, let's see if you were getting in 90 grams of carbs in an hour you'll make it through the bike and you'll probably still have issues on the run Uh, let's see what happens if we increase this to more like Ironman times. Uh, so for myself, I'm planning to do Ironman Lake Placid. I'm looking to do the swim in about an hour and 40 minutes. So that's about whatever that is, 1.6 hours. The bike, there's a lot of climbing. I'm anticipating doing it in seven hours. The run... I'm probably going to finish in four hours and 45 minutes. So 13.35 hours, that's active time plus transitions. So I'm hoping to finish just under 14 hours if I have a good day. 
so you can see if I was a high carb, eating a high carb diet at a really bad fat oxidation rate, and I was taking in 90 grams of carbs an hour, uh, I could potentially have a really bad day and just not finish. Um, gonna make it through the swim, may have trouble even finishing the bike, and will definitely not finish the run. So let's play with these numbers a little bit. Let's look back at this flow chart and say, um, do I eat a low carb diet? No. Do I do some fasted training? Yes. Um, let's follow this chart here. Do you struggle doing sessions without sports drinks and gel? Let's just say no. Um, and let's say you're in, you're in pretty good shape and you're going to, be in this area here, your male, and you're going to finish an Ironman in nine and a half hours. Let's just say your fat oxidation is 0 0.6. 0 0.6. Um, and you're taking in 100 grams of carbs in an hour. Uh, let's change these numbers. So, nine and a half hours. You're probably going to finish the swim in an hour. Pros finish in like 52 minutes or 55 minutes. <laughs> Let's just say 1.1 hours. You're going to finish the bike in four and a half. And you're going to finish the run in four. Does that work out? No. 3.5 hours. So it's sort of, sort of in the right range there with transition times. You can see... This person with an improved fat oxidation rate, taking in 100 grams of carbs an hour, is going to be fine. They're not going to bonk. Yeah, so you can really see the importance of two things. Your, your fat oxidation rate, taking steps to get that better, and figuring out the right number of carbs per hour for you to consume, and, and working on your body's ability to, to actually digest that. Uh, if this person was taking 60 grams of carbs in an hour, they would bonk on the run. So that's even if their fat oxidation rate was was higher, and uh, you can see it lo it looks kind of like they're going to consume more fat than carbs on the swim, and then it will flip to be the opposite on the bike. And then almost getting closer to 50-50 on the run. So it's really interesting to tinker with these numbers and, and see, like, you know, if you see a professional bonking, like, what what happened there? <laughs> you can mess around with this. Uh, let's look at what's more my plan. So I'll put this the race times back to my goals. So 1.6, 7. 4.75. I'm probably going to walk a fair chunk of the run, even if my energy is fine. I'm just going to be beat up. <laughs> I like to joke that I'm meant to run half marathons. <laughs> um, and so if I follow this flow chart, I eat a low carb diet. I have been for six months, so I'm well adapted to it. I'm not in ketosis. Um, because I, that's just too extreme of a diet. And I've read that being in ketosis can actually hurt your body's ability to use carbs for energy. So there's that trade-off there. <laughs> it's almost like, I don't know if that's the term, but you're, it's like your carb oxidation rate or something. <laughs> you hurt that by being too good at burning fat. Uh, so no, I'm not in ketosis. Uh, I have a feeling my fat oxidation rate is about one because I've had zero trouble doing long bike rides and long runs with S fuels race and S fuels train which are meant for low carb athletes so I'm going to say my rates at about one so put 1.0 uh, and what I'm planning to consume is uh, 
two servings of race plus s fuels race plus which contain 15 grams of carbs each so that's 30 um, you can see I would run into trouble on the run probably but make it through the bike just consuming that but I'm also going to consume on the bike and the run one gel per hour made by a company called UCAN U-C-A-N and their gels are designed to not spike your blood sugar and should and are good for low carb athletes who want to burn more fat during the race and each gel is about 17 grams of carbs I believe so that would take me to 47 grams of carbs an hour and just looking at my chart here it looks like I'm going to be absolutely fine uh, and if I do feel like I'm struggling I know I can, can, can I can eat carbs. I have an iron stomach, so I could always start taking on more carbs, maybe in the second half of the run if I just don't feel right. Uh, but you can see here, based on my fat oxidation rate, I'm burning more fat than carbs on the bike and the run and the swim. And it's funny, my spreadsheet looks a little goofy here on the swim. I'm sure I'm going to burn some carbs on the swim. <laughs> It's making it look like negative carbs. <laughs> Obviously, room for improvement in the bonky later. <laughs> but <laughs> this is really fun to put together uh, and kind of helped explain to me anyway, like why people might run into trouble and and that important relationship between your consumption your nutrition and your fat oxidation rate. If you found that video to be useful, please give it a like. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Make sure that the, the bell icon is selected so you get notifications every time I, I post new videos. And share this video with friends and family who may benefit from it. Thank you.